Hey friends, it's Peggy Hall back with you from thehealthyamerican.org. I'm continuing my coverage on the Baltimore bridge collapse and it put me in mind to do just a little digging into how bridges are actually constructed. Now I have no background in construction whatsoever, although one time we did remodel a kitchen, but I want to look at this from a lay person's perspective because what the government is really pushing is for everything to go green and sustainable and resilient. And and with this build back better, the build the bridge back better that the mayor of Baltimore said, uh, Mayor Scott, I did a video for you on that. And it put me in mind into how are they going to build back a bridge better? I did show you an image of how they put concrete pilings or concrete structures in front of these pilings so that I, I don't know if I'm using the correct words, but that way boats and ships are not able to damage the bridge, they would sort of be deterred from that. Have you seen that like at shopping centers where they have giant concrete barriers to kind of protect the structure of the building? So I suppose that's one way of doing it. But I started doing some digging into kind of sustainable energy for bridges. And I want to share with you exactly what I found. It's very interesting and a little bit hypocritical, I think, as well. And uh, you probably can read between the lies on uh, that. But before we dive in, I do want to thank the sponsor of this video. So let's hop on over. I've been telling you about my friends at noblegoldinvestments.com. If you are interested in finding out whether or not this is a fit for you, you can get expert advice. It's 877-646-646. 5347. And uh, if you've taken a good look at the banks lately, you'll see on the surface, everything seems fine, but there's a whole lot more going on underneath. It's like looking under the hood of a car and finding a mess of broken wires and parts. The parts are the loans for the homes, cars, and all those credit cards that people use. And those are hitting record highs. It's kind of scary when you think about it. So why risk your money for something like a tiny 5% return when things are so shaky instead? Instead, I would like for you to contact noblegoldinvestments.com and you can learn how to safeguard your family's financial future. As a thank you for opening their a qualified account, you will get a free quarter ounce gold standard coin. So go to noblegoldinvestments.com, claim your gold coin, get all of your questions answered. And Noble Gold Investments is the only gold company that I trust. Be sure that you check out the link and the disclaimer in the description box below. Friends, I want to do something of a lay person's uh, dive into how bridges are built. I find this fascinating now that we've got this in the headlines. And I want to take a look over here and join me as we look at this, how bridges are built. Now, everybody seems to want to build back better these days from the World Economic Forum. So let's see how bridges could be built better in terms of you know, the green and the resilience and so forth. So here's a visual guide as to how bridges are built. Have you ever been on a really iconic bridge? I remember being on the uh, Golden Gate Bridge, and it's kind of stunning to think that these are able to be, you know, that you can drive on them and they're able to withstand earthquakes and so forth, at least in California. So look at the engineering here. I'm not an engineer. I don't know anything about construction. There is the Golden Gate Bridge, but here is the bridge construction process. So it begins, of course, planning, and then there are final testings and inspections. It would be horrible to think of anybody that would be bribed or paid off to not allow these inspections and uh, testing to go forth uh, as it should. But here we go. There are uh, the site inspection and planning. Uh, that's the first step. They have to determine uh, whether the soil, or in this case, I guess, it, the water for a water bridge, the strength, the depth, the land layout to ensure the safety and durability of the final structure, setting the foundation, installing piers and bridge supports, completing the superstructure and the final quality and safety inspections. So here's how they're built over water. Isn't that amazing? It really does look like a marvel of uh, manufacturing and construction. It's absolutely uh, just awesome and stunning to me that these can be built like that. And here we are, it says bridges built over water. Gee, that puts me in mind of uh, several songs that have that in their lyrics. Uh, a bridge over troubled water. Okay. 
It uses the same construction process as any other bridge, but there are a few other factors to consider during the planning and construction phases. For most bridges built over deep water, construction crews must build coffer dams or lower cassins, cassins, I'm not sure on the pronunciation, into the water to create a dam and platform for the concrete towers to stand on. Lakes and riverbeds can be unstable, so crews may need to drive piles deep into the earth to achieve stability. And then if a stretch of water is wide enough, bridge builders may need to bring in specialized construction equipment like floating cranes, bridge booms, and hydro platforms capable of operating over water. Okay, there are suspension bridges, truss bridges, which is what they had in uh, Baltimore, arch bridges, cantilever bridges, and beam bridges. Now, what I want to bring to your attention is as we look at all of this construction, Look at all of the energy that is used to build a bridge. Do you think that these are gas powered tractors and earth movers and um, all of these things? Uh, that would be a big NO. Do you think that this is going to be all of this energy used for the construction is going to come from wind farms and solar panels? Well, that would also be a big N-O. And before we look at this integration of wind and solar into a bridge design, which is what the Build Back Better people want to do, I want to share that with you in just a moment. But think about the hypocrisy of this guy in the White House that is trying to push for every vehicle to be electric. And it's in the headlines. I've done several videos about the hypocrisy of you know, zero emissions. There's no such thing as zero emissions because building those cars takes gas and oil and coal for the manufacturing process to create energy. And even the electricity that these cars are powered by does not come out of the air. Well, actually it does, but, but we're told it doesn't. But to build these cars, you're using traditional energy. I will never call it fossil fuel because there is no evidence that this comes from fossils. In fact, I believe that the earth has a self-renewing ability to create more um, oil. So that's abiotic oil, and you can do a little deep digging on that. So when we hear that cars have to go all electric, that uh, municipalities have to have all electric buses, yet they're going to be building these bridges and they're not using electric equipment for that. It's it's ridiculous. There was a meme going around of somebody calling 911 and the operator says, I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait for the ambulance to finish charging and for the fire truck is still plugged into the battery. So the whole concept of going 100% electric is ridiculous. It's ludicrous. It has no... Um, foundation in reality. But let me show you what I came across when I was looking at uh, bridge building. All right, here we go. Building a bridge to renewable energy. This is some time ago, and I have not seen a bridge built with these uh, characteristics, but this is what is proposed, a solar wind bridge. And the concept is that it combines solar cells and wind turbines to generate power for around 115 homes. So it says bridges are generally exposed to the elements, meaning they generally get a nice dose of sunlight, often coupled with some fairly strong crosswinds. For these reasons, the solar wind bridge design would seem to make a lot of sense. The proposed bridge would harness solar energy through a grid of solar cells embedded in the road surface, while wind turbines integrated into the spaces between the bridge's pillars, as you can see right here, would be used to generate electricity from the crosswinds. The brainchild of Italian designers Francesco Colarossi, Giovanna Saracino, and Luisa Saracino, I don't speak Italian. I don't know if that's correct pronunciation. The solar wind concept was designed for Solar Park Works, a solar highway competition that asked entrants to modernize sections of a decommissioned elevated highway stretching between Bagnera and Scylla in Italy. So here are some pictures of their proposed design. Now, I will say Italians are great when it comes to design, but this has not been created and I'm not sure that it ever will be. Let's see if we can get uh, through to some of these images here. All right, here's their conception. The asphalt will be substituted with a technological road service of a kind already in the use of the USA 
solar roadways. I've never heard of that. Let me know if you have heard of that or if they are in your area. The road surface itself, therefore, will collect energy as a part of a power generating system composed of a dense grid of solar cells coated with a transparent and highly resistant form of plastic. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought we were supposed to get rid of plastic. I thought that was the enemy. <laughs> it's just the hypocrisy is what kills me. All right, here we go. 26 wind turbines, uh, 36 million kilowatts in one year. Of course, they love that number, 36, three sixes. Solar wind, combining solar and wind power allows for a continuous production of energy. The project is based on the idea of utilizing the space between the pillars of the existing viaducts to house a system of wind-powered turbines, which will be integrated into the structure. I will leave a link for this article, friends, if you would like to look at it a little more carefully. I'm just pointing that out because the mayor of Baltimore said that he wants to build back better. He wants to build the bridge back better. And given all of the talk in the federal government, of course, in California. I don't know if uh, Baltimore and Maryland, how woke they are probably very, given their proximity to Washington, DC. But all of this talk about going all electric, it's highly unlikely that the bridge in Baltimore is going to be built using solar and wind power. And it's highly unlikely that they are going to be integrating, although I could be wrong, these solar and wind, uh, aspects to it, as I just described with these Italian designers. What about when there's no wind? What about when there's no sun? How much sun could the asphalt actually receive and generate power from with cars driving over it? Isn't the road covered by cars, which are giving off shade? <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. All right, friends, thanks for being on board. I just wanted to do a little more of a deep dive into this whole aspect of bridges. I did a couple of previous videos and I do have links for you over at my Substack, peggyhall.substack.com. If you're interested in the engineering of bridges, not from a layman's person like myself, but from an expert, I have a link for you with Jeff Ostroff. I think that's the pronunciation. He's a YouTuber. He's an engineer. He goes into all of the engineering plans, the blueprints and all of that. If you want to dig deeper into how bridges are made and some of the structural, uh, uh, defects that uh, defects that are found and why that often uh, causes these kinds of um, you know horrible uh, accidents. It's my healthy Americans that are bringing all of the insights and the uh, ability to connect the clots here. So I really appreciate all of you and I look forward to seeing you in an upcoming broadcast.